again. Today we're going to look at the kind of nifty tool of scroll snapping. It's a fairly recent new thing which gives CSS developers the control over scroll position a little bit, which is quite handy. So what is it? I suppose ever since kind of the dawn of apps, people have tried to make native web work a little bit like apps because apps are kind of quite slick and quite cool but also have a great deal of control over layout and position and one of those things obviously is tabs the ability to swipe and slide and be able to jump between things we've seen obviously lots of things in progressive web apps to sort of try and bring through app functionality but um this idea about scrolling is is going to mean that you can start to control segments of your page so you can start to block your page up into um, squares that can then be transitioned between rather than just giving the user the control. I suppose it's worth saying that scroll position has always been a kind of uh, contentious area in web development. Anything which uh, scroll, scroll hacks, scroll jacks and, and sort of takes control over your scroll position usually with some JavaScript to sort of make something else happen or to make your page move in another way is seen as an accessibility flaw. It's also just not a very nice user experience sometimes when a page doesn't work as expected. So it's uh, a very uh, gentle step into that world to sort of just give you a little bit more control. And I think it, if deployed correctly can mean you can have um, a lot more of a nice um, fluidity between the things you get to build. So here's the demo I'm going to work with. I made like a little content page about um, the game Cartographers, which is just a fun uh, little board game. Um, you can see I've kind of got these sections, I've got this big heading area with some basic details. Then I've got this um, content area, which is more an overview. Then a longer section with lots of text and images, and then a couple of review blocks. It's very clear there are distinct sections of this page. But as is often the case, certainly when uh, a designer hands you a web page with some static or semi-static um, files to work from. They've got a very distinct view about how the user would perceive it. So they might give you a full page design, but they might give you a view of this square and then another view of this square, which looks pleasant, then another view of this square. They're really giving you um, their idealized viewport about where they think the page should start and end. And in that sense, they can make things that look very nice. If you have a viewport like this that's sort of somewhere between two views, it kind of looks confusing and disjointed, uh, something like this similarly. And that's kind of unfair because you don't have control. The, um, the user gets to pick where they stop and where they start. And uh, unfairly, it means that, that sometimes you as a designer are going to have your, your kind of vision bastardized because of someone just scrolled and stopped at a certain point. So wouldn't it be nice if you got to present the user with what you wanted by taking them to the appropriate point in a scroll? So let's try and hook this up. It's remarkably easy. The first thing you need really is the scroll snap type property, which you add to the parent. And you can see that the values you give it are X or Y dimensions. Generally, you're going to use Y because most scrolling is, is vertical. And then there is a mandatory or proximity uh, setting, which we can jump into. So on my article, which is the main parent of the page, scroll snap type Y, it's worth noting that you need to apply this to the element that's actually going to be scrollable. So if it's just going to be the content of the page, you'd add it to the body of the HTML tag. Um, I've actually added it to the, the article because that's going to have a, a set height. It's got an overflow property and it's going to be that which everything is scrolled between. So you just scroll between the sections on that. If you're finding it's not working, it might just be the element you're setting it to isn't the thing that's going to be scrolled. Then on the sections, we need to give them a little bit of a rule to, to know that they, they're going to have a scroll setting upon them, which is this one, scroll, snap, align, which is to set on an element. Uh, the value is none, start, end, and center. So we'll start by giving the section scroll, snap, align, scroll, snap, align of start. So um, 
oh that looks a bit messy basically that's all i've got is an article and each of those sections is um an actual section element so on the parent we're setting scroll snap type y scroll snap align okay so then you can see that if I scroll, you can still do little bits of scrolling, but when you reach certain points every now and then, it's gonna just uh, make a little snap jump because of it will know it's the beginning of a new section and it's probably where you wanna jump to. You can make this more distinct by adding that additional property. So we go Manda. You gotta spell mandatory correctly though. It really matters. <laughs> you got mandatory on here. Ah. If I do a slight scroll now, Really, it's it's keen to just get you to that first point. So I do a slight scroll and boom, we've got to jump to this section. Slight scroll, jump here. So it's quite smooth and it means that, again, you avoid those little midpoint states and it means you're gonna get a quite smooth experience as a user. Certainly if it's a kind of brochure style website where really it's just about impressing them with cool effects and just hitting them with little bits of graphics. The ability to kind of not completely overtake their scroll and, and kind of take them to a whole bunch of animations, but just to just guide them to like the main headings and sections. Maybe you want to trigger a, an animation or a transition when they get to a certain point. So rather than just waiting and checking on scroll, you just go boom, bring them in, hit some sort of effect. So it just gives you a little bit more control. Here's a section which is longer than the page height. You wouldn't want a section where every time you uh, scroll, it then immediately scrolls up a whole section. Although you could probably do some kind of sinister website where you put some kind of uh, really intriguing image below that fold and then as soon as they scroll they see it but they can never actually stop on it because they keep scrolling past it or something generally you're not going to want to do that and it helpfully does that it doesn't completely control your scroll so i can still scroll i can still read this article it's just that when i'm getting near the bottom it's going to make that jump for me that could be a problem so for here you you know you might not know how long this review is going to be i start scrolling and inadvertently i've got to the bottom and as i let go it's jumped so i never got to read those last sentences because I, while i was reading it just jumped for me so for that you can switch the mandatory to uh proximity and that way we go back to the top it's going to carry on letting you scroll and really it means it's only when it's within a certain range so you see, look, I managed to get this far. It's only when you do like a, a large enough scroll that it kind of gets within a proximity to allow you to do that jump. So here I can scroll to the bottom here and that next scroll position comes into view. It hasn't made the jump for me. It's only when I get past a certain point or you do a big enough scroll that it kind of feels comfortable doing it. So it's kind of like a soft version. It's your, um, it's your wingman. It's just gonna kind of keep you in check and just keep bouncing you to the right points and just trying to make sure it hits those certain bullets but it doesn't overtake you too much. It's a kind of very subtle, kind of pleasant uh, way of working. However, we're scrolling up here. You see, I scroll up slightly. It doesn't, doesn't let me go any further up because it kind of goes, you haven't gone high enough to make a dent. So I'm just gonna realign you where you need to go there. But once I've got above it, it's kind of quite soft and it's gonna um, just let me find my own way. If I go back to mandatory, Oof, then just even the lighter scroll when you go up, it's gonna jump all the way up to the head of the section. It assumes there's no way you're gonna to wanna to see the bottom of this content section. Even with this large section, it's gonna scroll you all the way up every time. So I guess it depends on uh, which uh, type of situation you're in with your content, whether it's kind of low content or low uh, size of boxes in which you generally wanna hold, always make sure people view the whole thing, or it's longer content like this where you make people wanna always start from the top or the bottom or something. With regards to the actual aligned position, to start makes sense, certainly in this one, that you always want people to start. The scroll to always jump to the heading. You could choose something like um, end, uh, which here doesn't help because of, so you see like that overview, it's gone to the end. That's kind of fine. You can sort of see it's, it's kept that in, that's quite cozy. But here I start reading about the gameplay and then it's gonna jump me to the end. So that's just really frustrating. This review, it's pushed me midway down. This one's pushed me down. It doesn't really make sense. Uh, I imagine center would make even less because of now it's gonna just move me to an arbitrary place in the middle of each of these sections. So uh, there might be an application for those I'm not really thinking of, but they're probably rarer. It's worth thinking to also there's um, 
a few extra settings for giving you a little bit of padding either way. So it might be that even though your section is where you want to jump people to, you always want to move them about 200 pixels below that so that the the extra margin is kind of lost and you want their scroll position to always start at a certain bit of content. There's a few more extra params around this. Hmm. But that really is a uh, scroll snap in a way. It's um, not this big overbearing thing. It's not some big animation library. If you were trying to do something um, which needed a bit more nuance, so if you wanted to set the speed at which the scroll was happening, if you wanted to uh, fade things and trigger animations, if you wanted to really dig into this, then you'd probably be better leading into a uh, JS-based solution or some sort of animation library. Really, I think it's just that, uh, that you're gonna have uh, an app-like interface where you wanna give people screens and you wanna let people trigger sort of quick swish animations or something in which you've got a kind of got more of a brochure site in which you wanna kind of just um, keep people in line with certain sections. For that, it's a tiny amount of CSS. We see here like two lines, which is gonna just give you a great deal of control and uh, make designers happier that people are gonna view their content in the right way. I'd appreciate any feedback on people that have used it uh, any more or any applications for it that I've, I've missed, but um, that's all we got. Thanks a lot.